What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Sigma Traits. Let's get straight into it. For attractive women, is this, like, how big of a concern is sexual harassment? Like, none of you guys are working with Harvey Weinstein out here, but is it actually common for attractive women to actually be harassed in the workplace? I would say yes. Really? Yeah. I, it, but, but with a caveat that it depends on the woman's comfort level because harassment is subjective. So, you know, for example, good point. If you are sending me explicit messages, like, yes, that's a clear de like delineation of sexual harassment. But my brother actually had a, an instance where he was pulled into an HR situation and, you know, he had just put his hand on the back of his assistant and said, you know, can you tell them that I need five more minutes, like to go tell the new clients, like, just give me a second. And and that innocent. Was innocent, like, right? Like, hey, yeah. So that was an incident. So I think it really just depends on what you deem sexual harassment. And I, and I feel for guys sometimes because how do you know where that line is? I don't know. That's subjective. Well, a lot of these women are looking out there just to get a little bag. They're just looking to get a little bag out of it, you know? And, when you know, and if they can claim that, they can get some money out of you. Folks say things like, believe all women. I have a question. Why? Really, why? Because... I am inclined to believe stories of sexual abuse. I really am. But when folks say believe all women, you can't believe all women any more than you can believe all men or believe any other group of people. Facts. And to suggest that women are inherently more believable than men is sexist. To say that men don't deserve the same due process as women is sexist. And Facts. I believe that men shouldn't act like pigs. I've been only advocating this since I was a teenager. I'm the only man in America who was a virgin until I was married and proud of it. I've been advocating for a higher standard of traditional behavior on the part of men literally my entire public career. But that doesn't mean that you get to carve out a section of crimes that don't require evidence. Facts. A twist of fate. I don't agree with Ben Shapiro on everything, but that, yeah, got to give it to him. Women are now facing the unintended consequences of the Me Too movement. And guess what? They have no one to blame but themselves. A forthcoming study in the journal Organizational Dynamics reveals how men's behavior toward their female colleagues has hilariously shifted since the movement gained momentum. Brace yourself. 27% of men now avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings with female co-workers. Yes, nearly a third of men are now terrified to be alone in a room with a woman. Wow. Who knew office life could turn into a horror movie? But wait, there's more. A solid 21% of men admit they hesitate to hire women for positions involving close interaction, like business travel. Dang. And 19% confess they'd think twice about hiring an attractive woman. Dang. Sorry, ladies. It looks like being pretty is now a career liability. The research, conducted in early 2019 across various industries, shows a disturbing, and let's be honest, comically ironic, trend. In 2018, when Hash Me Too was all the rage, 15% of men were reluctant to hire women for jobs requiring close interpersonal interactions. Fast forward to 2019, and that number had jumped to 21%. Dang. So a paper came out recently that looked at the impact of the Me Too movement on academia, and it actually shows that post Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. Wow. The paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of sexual harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. Wow. The author points out that men feel like if they they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. She also notes that institutions that have clear policies on sexual harassment help reduce this perceived risk. And this isn't just in academia. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the same concerns. And a curious finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas women don't make up for it at all. And the author concludes her findings by saying that Me Too was important for raising awareness, but it's also increasingly important for institutions to have really clear sexual harassment guidelines. Wow, really, Me Too really backfired on these women. That's crazy to me. The Me Too movement has become big enough to encompass everything and diffuse enough to risk becoming nothing at all. As it descends the ladder from rape to bad dates, it's becoming a category big enough to be meaningless. Hmm. Four months ago, we learned the shocking news about Harvey Weinstein. Soon after, we heard about more monsters in everyday places. The Me Too hashtag took off and a movement was formed. More women came forward, more powerful men were fired. 
but just as quickly. Oh, I remember when Matt Lauer was fired, I was like, dang, Matty, come on. Men were unfairly caught in the crossfire. Matt Damon said that groping someone's butt was different from sexually molesting a child. The mob said he was callous, misinformed, and part of the problem. An anonymous woman described a disappointing date with Aziz Ansari, and suddenly, bad hookups were added to the list. Some women said the problem was the male power structure itself, and soon smashing the patriarchy was added to the long list of goals. Really? The it's patriarchy? What built our modern world? What keeps your phone on? The lights on? The water running? Come on, stop. It seemed that almost every woman had some kind of experience or goal that she wanted to add to the agenda. No problem was too small or too vague to be included, so long as a man was to blame. The women's movement in America began at the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848, and it also Dang. included a long list of goals. Soon enough, leaders focused on one goal, suffrage. It was a record. Women's suffrage. So have you seen that video? There's a video online. This, go guy, this guy goes to like Yale or Stanford. He's like, let's end women's suffrage. And all these girls are like, yeah, I hate suffrage. Suffrage is their right to vote. <laughs> 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 but, but most people think it's suffering. A watershed moment. And it changed the country forever. If Me Too is going to change America, it needs to focus on its original and most serious goal ending the kind of workplace sexual harassment that has plagued women ever since they entered the workforce. Right, they wanted to be in the workforce, now they're in workforce, they're mad about what it is. It's dominated by guys, and guys are, you know, I always say this, men are pigs, and we're very much so like, we'd like to chew the fat and cut when up. When men take steps to ensure they don't harass women, they get criticized. Wonder why? Oh wait, they want certain men to stick around, but even those guys are hightailing it out of there. There was a woman who published a blog post about quitting her job because she was being harassed. But reading her story, it turns out the harassment was a guy sending her an email asking her out on a date. She said she felt pressured. I mean, that, that's, that's inappropriate, but I wouldn't call that harassment. Let me know in the comments. Would you consider if a guy was sending an email to a woman that, and he wanted to go out on a date with her, would you consider that harassment? Personally, I wouldn't consider that harassment. That's a bit of a stretch, in my opinion. It's a bit of a stretch. But to my, tonight, one retired CEO is speaking out about why he thinks this might end up having the wrong effect on women in the workforce. Steve, Trisha, well, this new wave of women standing up against sexual misconduct has led to all sorts of changes. But tonight, one CEO believes it may be preventing women from getting the jobs they want. Preach. From the entertainment industry to the gaming world, women everywhere are standing up against sexual misconduct in the workplace. It's a new day. It is the era of the women now. The latest case has brought this movement right to the Las Vegas Strip. Casino mogul Steve Wynn stepping down as CEO yesterday after allegations he sexually assaulted employees. But is time really up? I have a big concern. He should have allegations of that facelift. Shots fired! Shots fired! Just age gracefully, dude. <clears throat> And it's what's going to happen in hiring going forward. Mark Yosiloff is the director of UNLV School of Gaming and Innovation and hired hundreds of men and women as former CEO of Shuffle Master. He says this movement will make it tougher for women to get hired, especially when they're up against a qualified man. They might elect to hire the man because they are concerned that down the road, whether they do anything wrong or not, there might be a she said, he said. Yoslov says current CEOs he knows have already opted not to sit in meetings alone with women in fear they would do something to spark a complaint. It's a craziness that no executive wants to have to face. Many people, including myself, Makes only sense. became aware of the Me Too movement in 2017 when Rose McGowan, a white wealthy woman who was a famous actress, brought it up. But it was actually started all the way back in 2006 by Tarana Burke, an African-American social activist. Women of color have been speaking up about sexual abuse in low-income workspaces for ages, but they never garnered the same attention as a rich white actress. There's been some backlash about Me Too and some anxiety, as you might imagine. Many, many male managers and owners um, are feeling a little bit more tentative 
when working with and, and managing their female workers. Listen to this. A side result, an unintended consequence of the Me Too movement has popped up. Male executives and managers, some, are now saying they are afraid to work with and mentor female colleagues in the workplace. So we're trying to find out, is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment? Listen, I can't give any more information. Uh, but I fear I may have girl boss a bit too close to the sun. Large percentage of male managers were concerned about working with women one on one in the workplace. They were concerned about mentoring women. They were saying they were afraid to have meetings with women, to travel with women, and so on. It indicates that there are anxieties and fears that we need to address. Yep. The Good movement point. meant to protect women has also turned men into cautious, second-guessing wrecks in professional settings, creating a new set of laughable challenges for women in the workplace. Who would have thought trying to navigate office politics could get even more awkward? Ah, the Hash Me Too movement, where every workplace interaction between men and women feels like an HR horror show just waiting to happen. Now, some men treat female colleagues like ticking time bombs, avoiding them like the plague for fear of being falsely accused of harassment. Who needs mentorship and professional growth when you can just stick to your own gender bubble, right? And let's not forget the confusion. With the lines between appropriate and inappropriate behavior blurrier than ever, everyone's walking on eggshells, scared to say or do anything that could be misconstrued. Who knew workplace interactions could be this much fun? Welcome to the new era of professional relationships where paranoia and awkwardness are the hot new trends. Yeah. Earlier suck. this year, I had the displeasure of dealing with a female coworker harassing a male coworker. A male subordinate comes to me to report the female subordinate. She decided that she wanted his opinion on fellatio techniques. What? She asked him because he's openly gay. I went with him to HR to report. Good, report it. Hope she gets fired. HR calls everyone involved to get their side. At this point, the female employee realizes the male employee snitched and begins bad-mouthing him. HR hands down punishment based on zero tolerance policy. Three days unpaid suspension for the male victim, but only one day unpaid suspension to the female employee because she's pregnant and we can't cause too many problems. The male employee came back from wow. suspension with legal representation. The female employee came back and all the male employees avoided her and any situation where they would need to be alone with a female employee. Now here's a quick one about a gal who she as well as her female co-workers are having a meltdown because a guy at work isn't paying attention to them. And as I what? say, women, uh, they need attention and validation the same way plants need sunlight and water and how if a guy rejects them, either rejects their advances, or doesn't pay attention to them, they lose their freaking minds. Title. A colleague at work, a 27-year-old male of one year, refuses to socialize with me, a 24-year-old female, or any of the women in our office. Oh, the travesty. Right. Awful. There are plenty of other horrible things going on in the world, but nothing is as horrible as a guy, God forbid, not paying attention to you and your friends. Facts. She says here, hi, all. I'm posting this on alternative uh, alternative site because I know a few of my friends are following me on here, and I don't want this spilling out until I have some clear thoughts on what I want to do. Oh, you're trying to say you don't want any drama because something tells me. You're, yeah, you're just gonna give not give not all the facts and speak emotionally instead of logically. Nice. Get on the internet and complain about it. Don't don't think about it and internalize it. Don't do that. You like drama. So early last year, our firm hired Dan, a 27 year old male. In the first few weeks, he was really quiet and didn't talk much, and that's just how we thought he was. Every conversation with him was short and to the point and never deviated from work, Smart aside man. from pleasantries, have a nice weekend, etc. About two months ago, he started becoming a bit more friendly with the guys in our office, and they would hang out every so often after work and have normal conversations. Isn't it interesting that she and her friends are really paying close attention to what this guy's doing? Yeah, worry about me. However, when any, whenever any of the girls in the office tried to do so, he would quickly ch uh, change the conversation back to just work or not reply. Even now, after a year of Dan working with us, he straight up refuses to socialize with the girls in the office, and he's making them feel uncomfortable. This uh, is a big U.S. thing, though. Like, people in the U.S., they'd be, these women would be getting so booty hurt, bro. 
Papa. Now he's the bad guy. He's making us feel uncomfortable. Maybe he's sticking to business. Maybe he's worked at a place where the girls act like it's high school and wants nothing to do with it. Or maybe he's become very RP'd, understands about MG Tau, things like that, knows the Mike Pence rule, and he's doing that for a good reason. But he's making you uncomfortable. He avoids any discussion of himself outside of work-related events and future plans and doesn't ask any of the girls either. Aware as he is, what can I only assume, pretty good friends with the guys in the office. Even on work meals out to celebrate events, he's only doing the bare minimum when it comes to conversation with the girls. Smart Where again man. with the guys, he talks to them like there is no problem whatsoever. Because there isn't. I don't know if I'm overreacting. You are. You sure about that? But one of the girls... She's self-projecting so hard. I don't know if I'm overreacting. Honey, you are. ...is considering going to HR about this because she is saying it's creating a hostile work environment. Wow. Dan treats us like he treats clients we work with. Cordial and strictly about business, and it's wearing thin now. Any advice is appreciated. Okay. She asked for advice, so I'll give some advice. You and your friends need to grow the F up. You're 24 years old, so I'm assuming all the female co-workers are probably in the 20s. We all know what generation they're in between the Z-tards and the Millennials. <laughs> it's rough, B. I haven't heard them called that. It's kind of funny, though. But, I mean, dude, if you're in the workplace with a bunch of people, you've got to just realize that men now are just more cautious. We're not going to just sit there and chew the fat with you like we chew the fat with guys. Like, if guys go to HR, they're not going to complain like, oh, he's being a little too aggressive or he's doing doing this or doing that. It's like women are highlighted to be the ones that complain. Anytime, there's ever, anytime I've ever been in a company, like the first company I ever worked at, and there was any complaints about that, it was always from a woman going to HR. It was never from a man going to HR. It was, it was never. And then usually women only complain about the guys they don't find attractive. So if you're an attractive guy, they won't complain. But if you aren't an attractive guy, they'll probably complain. Like the guy earlier put his hand on her back, like, hey, can you make sure to get that? She's like, whoa, do not touch me. It's like, dude, I'm just... We're just sitting here talking. It's crazy to me, but like, just like men are demonized now to just go to work and just like open up and, and like have regular conversation. Like if we, if we were on the street or if we were at a pub or something like that, we were at a bar and we met each other and your friends were there, my friends were there and we were just talking, we would be having like an open conversation. Like nobody's going to save you. But now women have this safety blanket of HR where they can go and complain and say certain things and get people in trouble. And it puts them higher up on that hierarchy of control. And then they're mad now that they have that hierarchy because now men are like in this bubble where they're like, well, I can't act. I can't do certain things. But it's like, but you created that boundary. You created that barrier. Why are you mad at something you created? It makes no sense to me. He's like, you wanted the control, you got the control, and now you're mad that you have it? It's like, what? Us men are just adhering to the boundaries that you set. I, I feel like that would be respectful. That's what you wanted, right? You wanted us to just keep it business. You wanted us to keep it cordial. You didn't want us to open up personally or do any, to share anything about our personal lives. Like, It is a fine line. I've managed teams before. It is a fine line. You have to know like, when, when is too far. You really do. And like one on one meetings is always tough, but you just have to make sure you keep everything like there's there's uh, ways to do it by opening up to a person and, and showing your vulnerability first before you try to get someone else's vulnerability, um, especially in a workplace like that. And they can come to a level of common decency and respect and things like that. But in the dating market, it's completely different. You don't want to show your vulnerability to a woman too early because then she finds your vulnerabilities. Then she takes then she takes advantage of them. It's kind of like when I talked about in yesterday's video where you, you want to find the girl's insecurities and then you can prey on those insecurities because then she wants your validation. That's how you can get her to want you right? She wants your validation, which is a good thing, right? You want her to want you. Women are hypergamous. They feel like they need to get the best guy out there. So if you can do that, prey on her insecurities, she wants your validation. Boom. You're now in that social hierarchy where she thinks you're more important, you're superior, and therefore she wants it. But um, it, it's a fine line. It, it's, a, it's a really fine line. Like if you don't know how to tiptoe that in the dating market or even in the professional market, it can be overbearing. It can be aggressive. So it really is a fine line. That's why I say like to the younger guys that watch the older guys is a little bit tougher, but for the younger guys, like now's your time to kind of experiment and see what works with you. See what works with your personality, how you act, how you speak, how you talk, how you walk, how you, how you carry yourself and things like that. And it's time to craft the man that you want to be pick an image of the man that you want to be in your mind and do everything in your power 
all day long to become that man. There was something I used to do when I was a kid. When I was like really young, I used to always think a camera was on me. Like, oh, a camera's on me. So I would act like people are always watching me because I was raised up religious. So I did think somebody was watching me. So I thought, "Mm, there's a camera on me. How do I walk? How do I talk? How do I carry myself? What am I wearing? How do I smell? Like almost like I was in a movie constantly. Like how would I move? How would I move around in my regular everyday life if someone was actually watching me and following me? Maybe this is something you guys should try. Act, act like for a day you're in a movie and you're the movie star of your own movie. How would you act? How would you walk? How would you talk? How would you treat others? What would you say? You know, think about it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.